Hi everyone, this is Jam Nolven. Long time no see. I know I've not posted one of my videos or tutorials on my YouTube channel for a while, and today I am back. And we're going to talk about the application of differential calculus in economic analysis. And we will precisely talk about the marginal rate of substitution. But before I get into the marginal rate of substitution, let me tell you a little bit why differential calculus is perhaps the most used mathematical method in economic analysis. So I previously started with integral calculus, then I did linear algebra, then differential equations. But these techniques are not used extensively as it is for differential calculus. Of course, differential equations are used when it comes to understand dynamics and developing growth models, specifically in macroeconomics. Differential calculus, though, is used uh, specifically in microeconomics problems to understand the rate of change uh, when a consumer is confronted to a choice. So it deals essentially with quantities. So in order to understand how quantities change and how consumers make the decision based on how quantities change, we apply the use of differential calculus. Integral calculus is simply to understand the surplus problem. So when you have consumer surplus or producer surplus, that's when you use integrals. Besides that, you don't really use integrals. You, Of course, you also use it to some macroeconomic problems. But uh, differential calculus is the most used mathematical um, method in economic analysis. In fact, I always encourage anyone who's interested in doing serious economic analysis to at least train themselves or to take courses on differential calculus because if you do not know how to use differential calculus in economics you won't be able to use other mathematical methods in economics because if you're for instance dealing with uh with consumer and producer surpluses which is the use of integral calculus you have to be able to use differential calculus first because you cannot use integral without differential calculus. So differential calculus deals essentially with derivatives and limits. All right, so now we're going to talk about marginal rate of substitution. I chose to talk about marginal rate of substitution as, a, um, as an example where I can illustrate the use of differential calculus because marginal rate of substitution is one of the most used uh, notion in microeconomics when we want to understand how a consumer uh, chooses between two goods, how the use of one good will affect the other. So this is very important. So that's why I decided to talk about it. But the use of differential calculus is not solely limited to the marginal rate of substitution. You can also use it for the Higgs demand curve, uh, the, or the Higgs and demand curve, should I say, or the marginal utility and etc. So, but here, we can use it more extensively. That's why I decided to focus on this. So what is the marginal rate of substitution? So the marginal rate of substitution is the rate at which a consumer can give up some amount of one good in exchange for another while maintaining the same level of utility. So that's what marginal substitution is. So the formula of marginal rate of substitution so is MRS equals minus dy over minus dx. So as you see, we have a minus. It implies that the relationship between the two goods is a negative relationship. So we have, you can already graph it out. We have a downward slope. Okay, so it means that when the, when the consumption of x increases the consumption of y decreases okay so let me graph that for you guys here so all right so you have x you have y so you already see it is a straight line all right so as x increases y decreases this is 
the marginal rate of substitution. Okay. All right. So let me give you an example. But before I even give you an example, so the marginal rate of substitution is minus dy over dx, which can also be written as the absolute value of the marginal rate of substitution, which is dy over dx. But when we talk about dy over dx, in fact, it means that the marginal rate of substitution is equal to the marginal utility of x over the marginal utility of y. All right, that's what you have here. That's how you determine the marginal rate of substitution. So now that we have the formula, I'm going to show you an example of how to determine the marginal rate of substitution. So let's say you have a utility function, u, of x and y and let's say that x equals 2 square and y equals uh, and y is uh, y cubed okay so in order to apply the marginal rate of substitution we're going to calculate first the marginal utility of x so the marginal utility of x so which is mu x equals the derivative of u with respect to x so it's going to give you, so here we apply partial derivatives, which is, you know, uh, so here we apply partial derivative and the power rule. So we're going to treat, since we're concerned with the derivative of x, we're going to treat y as a constant here. So we're not concerned with y. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. And now we're going to calculate the marginal utility of y, which is... Uh, the marginal utility of u with respect to y. So, what is it going to give us? It's going to give us 3y squared. Remember, we apply here the, uh, how we call it? We apply here the power rule. Okay? So, now, what is it going to give us? So, mrs, so the marginal rate of substitution, equals... Uh, let me rewrite it here again. Mu, so marginal utility of x over marginal utility of y, which is equal to 2xy y cubed. So now here I rewrite the 2xy cubed because the y cube is still attached to the 2x, but since I was... Uh, calculating the derivative of x, I was only concerned with that. So the y, as I said, was treated as a constant, so we're not concerned with that. But now that since we are rewriting the formula, we have to include it here. Over uh, 3x squared, y squared. So the 3 is for this, but we put it just in front of that, of, of the x squared here. All right, so what is it going to give us? So the marginal rate... Uh, the marginal rate of substitution is going to equal to 2x over 3y. Okay, so here if you do like 3 minus 2 equals 1, so that's why we have here x, x squared minus, x squared minus x, so it's 2 minus 1 is 1, so that's what we have here. So this is the response to our problem all right so remember that when we talk about the marginal rate of substitution we also mention the we say that uh the utility is the same for the consumer so there is an indifference curve that is added to it right so the indifference curve will come as the slope all right so this is the indifference curve so when so the, the choice of the consumer here so the level of utility of the consumer here along the indifference curve doesn't really affect his behavior because as we said he's maintaining the same level of utility while consuming those two goods all right so that's what it is so what is interesting for you guys to know is that 
the marginal rate of substitution, right? We know that it's m u x over m u y. It is also equals to the budget constraint line, which is p one over p two. But here, I'm not going to get into the budget constraint line. That's not the point here. But it's to the reason why I'm mentioning this is because I want you guys to understand that there is a relationship between the marginal rate of substitution and budget constraint. In fact, the budget constraint is the logical continuation of the marginal rate of substitution. And the budget constraint is when the consumer wants to determine how to maximize his utility when he has a budget. So he has two goods and he wants to understand how much he could spend in order to maximize his utility over those two goods. So that's when we talk about budget constraint. But let me show you at least the formula of the budget constraint, which is, uh, let's say, B, B for budget, okay, it's P1 X plus P2 Y. All right. So if you're dealing with the budget con a problem of budget constraint, you have to calculate basically the marginal rate of substitution, which is this formula. So it gives you so once you have the result of the marginal rate of substitution, you use that for the budget constraint. But the budget constraint that would be for another time. But that was to just tell you a little bit that there was a relationship between the two. So this is interesting because the marginal rate of substitution and budget constraint, so the maximization of utility here, was developed by Alfred Marshall. Okay, so Alfred Marshall was a British economist, developed that. And what you see here is what we call the Marshallian demand curve. The Marshallian demand curve so this is the marshall and demand curve the marginal rate substitution okay and then you have the uh the indifference curve that passed by but uh yes so uh, i hope you uh you enjoyed uh this tutorial but that's how this is one of the instances where differential calculus is used in economics i hope you found this tutorial useful uh, let me know in the comments what you think and uh, until then, see you guys soon. And uh, I can't wait for another one. Thanks.